welcome to the video. This is part two of a two-part discussion where we've been talking about low ESR capacitors and RC filters. In part one, I looked at how effective capacitors can be when applied to ESCs in reducing noise in the system. Take a look here if you'd like to refresh yourselves on what we discussed. In this video, we'll be looking at RC filters and how effective they are at reducing noise within the system. And then later on, I'll be offering my opinions on which way do we go? Do we have low ESR capacitors or RC filters or maybe both? So let's get into it. Here is our copter from the previous video. All the ESCs now have an ESR capacitor attached to them. Now we've just got this LC filter connected to the LiPo battery and we're going to do monitor the signal here which is the entry point to the LC filter and here which is the exit from the LC filter. Okay let's check the signal coming into the filter and tap the aircraft and you can see the noise pattern that we had earlier so we're looking at around about one volt but notice the high frequency component, that shaded area on the graph. Now let's move over to the output from the filter. You can see we've got much less of a peak voltage there, so it looks like maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a volt. And notice that that high frequency component is now gone. That's a good sign. So we see here that the LC filter is doing a good job. But you might be thinking to yourself, well, do we use an LC filter? Do we use ESR capacitors? Do we use both? So let's take a look at a quick drawing and then that will explain it all for you. In this next section, I will be presenting my opinions on the use of capacitors versus the RC filter. In this first diagram, we have a very simplified view of the electronic systems of our mini quads. So we've got our battery over here which is supplying voltage to our ESCs and it's also supplying voltage to our other electronics like our flight controller, our radio receiver and our video transmitter, things like that. So you could think that this area here, you could say this is like a dirty section in terms of the electronic noise and this is a clean section. So we've got a little bit of separation that we're trying to achieve here between those two areas. You'll also notice on this first diagram here that we don't have any capacitors or RC filters at this point and we have some more diagrams which I'll show you in a moment which have those inserted and we'll talk a little bit more about them. Let's take a look at a typical flight scenario. So say we increase the throttle rapidly or we chop the throttle rapidly. What we would find is that the motor attached to the ESC would generate some noise on the supply lines here, power supply lines. That electrical noise that we saw earlier would transfer along these lines and affect all the other sensitive electronics in the system. And what can happen at this point is that you might get lines on your video or you might even find that uh, it actually starts to fail some of the components here. It also has an effect on other ESCs that are in the system. So this voltage is rapidly varying here, so it can actually affect other ESCs. And I know that I've had a situation where uh, I've looked like I've got a desync on one of my motors, but it was actually the ESC had failed because the sheer amount of noise coming into the ESC makes it malfunction and stop the motor. So in order to reduce the risk of these issues, we can either use a capacitor or an RC filter. In this diagram, the only addition here is that we've got a capacitor attached to the ESC. So in the same scenario where we've got braking or we've got large throttle increases, then the noise that's generated from the motor and comes through the ESC will actually flow through this capacitor here. So from, from positive to ground, it will flow through here. And so in this particular instance, it means that the voltage spike is not going to actually reach so much this these sensitive components because it's being shunted at this point here so it's not always perfect it will never completely remove all that noise but it will drastically reduce it as we've seen in the previous video so that's method number one of using a capacitor now let's take a look at the second method which is using an lc filter 
So as you can see here, we have really have separated the dirty section with the ESEs away from the more sensitive components. So any noise that's generated from any of the ESEs will come along to here and then this LC filter will filter out that noise to a lesser extent and then you know the, uh, the supply will be pretty good to the other components. So let's take a look at the third option here and that is to use a capacitor and the LC filter. So really with this approach you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the capacitor reducing the noise at the source and then at this point here it's reducing it even further so that you get a much cleaner signal going into your sensitive electronics. So the question then remains which one do we choose? Which, which option do we choose here? So it all depends on what you're trying to achieve from your copter and in my particular situation I do a lot of flying over water and I do a lot of long distance flying as well. So to me the reliability of the aircraft is paramount and I really can't have any sort of failures of equipment while I'm flying over those kind of terrains. So for me I've gone for this approach where I've got a capacitor on an ESC. Now of course I've got a capacitor against each ESC in the system and I've also got the LC filter. So with this approach I'm really minimizing the noise coming through to the electronics and I'm not getting any lines in my video but it also means that at this point here if I was to draw another ESC with a capacitor against it then it also means that any noise coming down here will be substantially reduced and not affect other ESCs in the system so the power that is applied to those ESCs is in a good stable state and it's not going to cause that ESC to malfunction and then of course we've got uh, motor failure. Um, so yeah that's the approach that I take which is quite sophisticated obviously we've got more components involved. I'm thinking that perhaps the minimum that most people would do would be the first option here which is just to have a capacitor and of course you can have one large capacitor against the supply within the PDB itself or you could strap a capacitor to each ESC and I think that's the most sensible option. It's not much weight and very small and they seem to do a very good job. I think that's pretty much it on this topic guys. I hope you've learned something from these videos and if you'd like to give me a thumbs up that will help me greatly and if you're interested in seeing any more topics like this then, then please let me know. So until next time Thanks for watching. Let's go fly.